which is a beautiful thing. The presence of God is here with us already. He's moving. He's already speaking to our spirit, to our spirit man. Amen. I just want to honor you, Sister Vicky, for inviting me again. Um, it's been a beautiful series talking about love, um, like we all agree. Uh, that's amazing. I just want to honor every sister, every woman, every speaker who has gone ahead of me here today. And I want to honor every sister who is listening here today. Um, I just thank God for each and every one of you. Um, if, if we did not carry love in our hearts, if each of you did not carry love in your hearts, you won't be here. Amen. To so keep coming back, you know, for the same message. But today to... Um, to bring it to a close for me, I wanted to just share and emphasize something that we all kind of have t touched on. And I want to just really take it home by reading. I'm not going to minister the way I did the last time. I want to read something that I actually wrote on my blog. Someone like Sister Atia has seen it already because when I began to ask the Lord, um, when Sister Vicky invited me to come back today, and I was like, Lord, what should I share? From what perspective should I share to bring all of this to a conclusion? And the Lord just led me to something that he laid so strong in my heart, which when I shared it, I put it on my blog, and I shared it out there. Those who have read it have been so blessed, and I felt that it was going to bless um, each of you here today. So with that said, um, let me start by sharing um, the very first thing I want to say is that, you know, we've all touched on this. Love is about obedience. Love is not the butterfly. Love is not a, a feeling. Love is obedience to God, and we have all echoed that in different ways. Love is death to self. We cannot love if we don't die to self. No matter what people do to us, no matter how much people upset us, a dead person does not feel anything. The fact that we are feeling something and wanting to get upset with someone and wanting to treat someone badly because they did something to us means that we are alive, means that the person, the human, the flesh is alive. And when the flesh dies, trust me, ladies, when our flesh dies, we will not be able to feel stuff anymore through the flesh. And then it becomes easier for us to love. Love is sacrificial. My sisters who went ahead of me have all touched on that. Until we learn how to sacrifice, love is the cross. Love is the cross. Jesus is love. So, in other words, we cannot love outside of Jesus. Jesus' life is our example of love. Love will demand forgiveness out of us. So love is not about people not hurting us. Love is not about people not disappointing us. Whatever reasons and excuses that we want to find for, for why it's hard to love someone, if we are truly dead to self, and if we understand that forgiveness is a lifetime thing, forgiveness has no limits. It has no boundaries. If we understand that, then we begin to understand love. So love is going to demand forgiveness from us and love is going to mean that we put other people's feelings ahead of our own feelings. Amen? Love thrives in brokenness. We must be broken. When I am broken, my pride is not going to be speaking louder than the need for me to love you. Love lays down its life. Love means that I can put you before me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love does not demand its own way. Everything that we do must be done in love, even for those of us who minister. You know, God had dealt with me about that at some point. No matter how anointed we are for those of us who minister, those of us who flow in signs and wonders, no matter how many miracles God does through us, no matter how much we prophesy, no matter how much we, how much we can cast out devils, First Corinthians 13, everything must be done through love. In other words, what am I saying? Everything should be done in love and by love. In other words, everything should be done in Christ and by Christ. The conclusion of the matter is that love is Jesus. <laughs> love is Jesus. So love brings us to the foot of the cross to die in Christ. We must die in Christ. We must die as Christ died. 
If we cannot do that, then no matter how hard we try, we're not going to be able to love. And that's why love is going to be so difficult for us. In the past and even in the present, every time we struggle is because we have not come to the cross and died in, with Christ. Amen? So we can only do everything in Christ and by Christ because Jesus is the embodiment of love. Jesus equates love. So you must come and allow the Holy Spirit Spirit to take over all of us completely as we die our new life that new life in Christ that is truly and totally submitted and surrendered to the Lord Jesus now you are living in Christ no it is not you who live anymore but it is Christ in you then you can love then I can love amen so just a quick reminder of some of what I, I had touched on. To love, we have to have the fear of God. If we don't have the fear of God, we cannot love. We have to have the consciousness of his presence. As you live in him, you carry his presence in you. Then you are always conscious that Jesus is with you and he's watching you. Then the power in you that works in you and through you, is the power of the Holy Spirit. And only the Holy Spirit can love. Because love is Christ. I cannot love. Anita cannot love. My flesh cannot love. But Jesus can love. Therefore, the Holy Spirit in me will love. Hallelujah. We have to die again. Our pride has to go. And the final thing was, you know, we talked about it already. Sister Effie touched on it as well. Demonic strongholds. So if after everything all of us sisters have shared through this series, if anybody is still struggling, if you find that you have tried to lay your life down, you have tried to surrender, you have tried to spend time in the Word, you have tried to stay in prayer and in fasting, but you're still struggling, then let's talk about deliverance. Because then we need to work on breaking that stronghold. Amen? The Bible says that this kind goeth not, but by prayer and fasting, this kind of what? This kind of evil spirit. If you're really struggling and you've done everything else that you can do and it's not going away, then we want to talk about how we can break that spirit that is standing in the way of you loving. Amen? So with that said, let me go through. Let me put on my glasses. And um, let me go through the message that I wanted to just share with you all today. It says, first of all, Matthew 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse 2, it says, for in the same way that you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. The crux of the, 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 the message that I wrote on my blog is really centered around Matthew 7, um, Matthew chapter 7, verse 2, which is saying that the same way that we measure others, the same way we judge others, in our interactions with each other, let us always put ourselves in somebody else's position. In other words, if I made a mistake, if Anita made a mistake, guess what? I would want Sister Effie to forgive me. I would want Sister Effie to understand that I did not mean it. I would want Sister Effie to understand that maybe because I was going through something in my marriage, that's why I did not give her what she was asking from me, right? I would want people to understand that my circumstances put me in a position where I struggle to love them. So how about we measure that same measure, that same expectation that we have of others, where we want others to look at us a certain way and understand our own faults and our own weaknesses, and our own limitations, how about we apply that same measure to every sister, every man, every child, every mother, every pastor, everybody that we encounter in our lives. So there goes the article. It says, there is so much beauty in women working together. Women tend to be very supportive of each other. Yes, God has made us where our natural tendency as women is that we want to nurture. So God put his love within us. I love how we quickly pull together and rally around other sisters. I have observed that when a woman appears unsupportive, there is usually a good reason behind her actions. 
So we want to always begin to think, if my sister fell short of expectation, if my son fell short of, of expectation, if my husband fell short, there must be a good reason. The same way that I would want them to understand that there is a good reason why I did not do something right. I love how we can cry with each other and become sisters in an instant like we grew up together and like we have grown to know each other all of our lives. I love how we can sacrifice for another sister to blossom. Whether I look in the community, the church, the family, all around me, there are women rising up to help other women, both in times of need and in times of celebration. So yes, even though we talk about how we struggle to love, but if we look on the flip side of the coin, yes, we, are also, we have love in us already because we carry Christ. We just need to allow that love to come to the forefront as we die to self. I have some amazing women in my life. There are some who have known me since childhood. We took the elevator together to the fifth floor. Yes, I am on the fifth floor. How many women here are on the fifth floor? Whether we talk or see often or not, we have each other's back. So ladies, we're not going to fall out because you have not called me for a month, right? We do not get caught in the weeds of pettiness and unrealistic expectations, right? Don't place unrealistic expectations on the people around you. That's how we love. We have learned to give each other the space that various seasons in life will demand of us without being judgmental and drawing false conclusions from a place of partial vision and limited information. My God, so we have learned how to give each other space. Because I don't always have full information about what is going on in your life when I want to judge you based on the limited information that I see. We have grown into emotionally intelligent women who do not allow vain imagination, small talk, and our humanity to come in the way of our love and our commitment for each other. So when the devil comes and he wants to start to whisper vain imaginations, I said, devil, I command you to get thee behind me in the name of Jesus. I reject those thoughts, those strongholds, that, those little vain imaginations that begin to come in my mind. Hallelujah. Yes. We have learned that to love is to forgive, to love is to empathize, to love is to sacrifice, and to always be willing to see from the other sister's perspective, even when it may hurt and not make sense. Yes, there are things you're going to do to me that I may never be able to find an explanation for it, but I have learned how to forgive you and to empathize and just trust your heart. We have understood that transparency and vulnerability are our strength. Yes, sometimes in order to love, we have to learn to be transparent with each other. I should not be afraid to say to you, if I see that I've hurt you so bad and you are struggling, if I should be able to be broken enough to say to you, my sister, you know what? My child was arrested last night, and therefore, that's why I could not call you back. As we learn how to be more transparent and more vulnerable with each other, then we don't leave any room for the devil to come in. Then there are those sisters who have come into my life in these latter years. They are purpose-driven women who have connected with me for the synergy that our collective efforts bring into our individual destinies. Yes, if we can understand that God brought all of us together because of destiny. Everybody in your life is in your life because of destiny, because of divine destiny. If we understand that, then we will not allow the enemy to steal the love that God wants us to share because the love is bigger, the destiny is bigger than whether you hurt me yesterday or not. Hallelujah. Did I hear that women mainly compete, fight, bicker, gossip, and that women are self-serving? Let's clean our lens and look again. Let's reposition and look from another angle. I learned a few things on my way to the fifth floor. The sister who may not have been in touch does not always have a problem with me. Life may be secretly beating up on her. Reach out and pray for her or just wait out. Sometimes if you're not understanding a sister, just pray for her or just reach out to her. Or if you cannot do that, just wait out. Just give her time. Hallelujah. Just allow her the time. The sister who is doing the same project like me 
did not copy from me. God assigned her to. God has a master plan which includes all my sisters. And sometimes it may take 10 of us to put up conferences, 10 of us to host retreats or write books to reach all the people that God wants us to touch. God needs an army of us working in sync, heading in the same direction for the same kingdom purpose. We have to remember that. Every time that you feel like, oh, that sister, she's copying me. She's stealing from me. Let's not allow thoughts like that to settle in our minds because God needs all of us. All of us. The sister who did not, who did not like or share my post, the one who did not comment below my post, she's not always jealous. She's not always refusing to help promote my stuff. She may have other priorities at that time. She may not have paid much attention to my post because her burdens left no room in her mind for much else. The sister who fell out with us and then one day becomes friendly again, she does not always have ulterior motives. They are not pretending. They're not being fake. Neither are they begging for my friendship. You know, a lot of times we're like, oh, what, what, what is she playing at? She hasn't talked to me for one year. Why is she suddenly talking to me? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Just trust that God's love has begun to work in that sister's heart. Hallelujah. Because we want each other to love. And when God begins to change us and transform us, we don't even recognize the transformation. We want to still suspect that sister. The Holy Spirit may have convicted them to do the right thing. They, have, they may have found out the truth or they may have healed from something that you and I have no idea about. You know, people will mature, people grow up, and people learn from their mistakes. Let's give each other the space to grow and to learn from our mistakes. Not because you heard me yesterday that I, I, I want to keep holding you to that. The sister who did not buy my product, she did not sign up for my network marketing business. Maybe she did not book my services or patronize my business. She's not jealous or she's not mad that I am progressive. She's not trying to stop my business from growing. It could just be an issue of taste or finances. Maybe she doesn't have the money or timing or just because. You know, every sister is entitled to make their choices and still be a sister, even when their choice is not what I wanted. Hallelujah. You see, a confident sister is not always proud. She's simply secure in her identity in Christ. How many of us, instead of loving the confident sister, we think they want to show up? A reserved sister is not always snobbish. She's probably just a phlegmatic personality, or maybe she's still just coming into her own. A loud sister is not always seeking attention. She's simply endowed with a big personality and is fun-loving. Hallelujah. A pretty and a fashion-conscious sister is not always a whore. She's not always a whore. She's fearfully and wonderfully made, ladies. Let's learn to love each sister for her different personality, her different style, her different choices. Sometimes we have to just trust a sister's heart above her actions or lack thereof. Just as we expect others to trust that our own intentions were genuine when we hurt others. Let's learn to also give others the same consideration. Find a reason to love rather than a reason to draw the wrong conclusion. Sisters, sometimes we can be so sure that we know the reason for a disappointing behavior, yet the alleged perpetrator may have been judged unfairly for circumstances beyond her control. A sister may be distant because she's dying of a terminal illness. A sister may have refused to hang out with you because she was bat she's a battered wife whose husband controls her movement. A sister may not have supported your business because she lost her job, she got evicted from her home, and she was not able to tell you. You see, a sister may not have come to your event because her child got arrested for a DUI by a police officer. We must understand that life does not revolve around us. We never know the full picture behind another sister's action. It's not about us. It's not about the self. The self must die. We must die if we want to love others. We must die. So the story goes, ladies. 
Women are amazing, nurturing beings with so much emotion bursting out of seams. That's how God made us. We, we love passionately, and sometimes we hurt deeply. But guess what? With the help of the Holy Spirit, we can truly be each other's keeper. I am blessed to have experienced the beauty of connecting with some phenomenal sisters who have learned how to channel their God-given passions into purpose-driven friendship. And some of you are here, you are my friends. I have faith that God can get us there, ladies. That if we put into practice what every speaker has brought to the table in this series, so let me leave you with 1 Corinthians 1, 10. It says, I appeal to you, sisters. It says brothers, but I'm changing it to sisters. I appeal to you, sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and of the same judgment. Hallelujah. So that is what I had to share to bring us to a conclusion that if we can consider each other the way we want to be considered, if we can be slow to rush to judgment, then it's going to become easier for us to love. But above all, if we can die like Christ and die in Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to come in our hearts and take over, then loving is going to become easier and easier. Hallelujah. God bless each and every one of you. That's all I have for us today. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Anita. Wow, 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 wow. I see why you are so much precious. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We thank God. We bless you.